subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button welcome to behind the news i'm your host halima sadia today we are talking about united nations 75th general assembly session this year amid the covid-19 pandemic un members and observers states submitted a pre-recorded video statement by their respective head of states or head of governments which were played in the general assembly hall after being introduced by the respective national representatives the theme for this 75th general debate is the future we want the united nations we need reaffirming our collective commitment to multilateralism confronting covid-19 through effective multilateral action world leaders have addressed an increasingly divided united nations at its 75th general assembly people fear the climate crisis poverty inequalities corruption and systemic discrimination on the basis of skin color or gender In an opening session, UN Secretary General said, "We must continue to respond to the immediate impact of the COVID-19 pandemic by strengthening health systems and supporting the development and equitable distribution of treatments and vaccines." He also added, "We must also prepare to build a strong recovery based on the 2030 agenda and the Paris Agreement." US President Trump attacked Paris Agreement. He also held China accountable over corona pandemic. He used a strong language against Chinese policies. 75 years after the end of World War II and the founding of the United Nations, we are once again engaged in a great global struggle. We have waged a fierce battle against the invisible enemy, the China virus, which has claimed countless lives in 188 countries. We must hold accountable the nation which unleashed this plague onto the world, China. In the earliest days of the virus, China locked down travel domestically while allowing flights to leave China and infect the world. China condemned my travel ban on their country even as they canceled domestic flights and locked citizens in their homes. The Chinese government and the World Health Organization which is virtually controlled by China falsely declared that there was no evidence of human to human transmission later they falsely said people without symptoms would not spread the disease the united nations must hold china accountable for their actions in addition every year china dumps millions and millions of tons of plastic and trash into the oceans overfishes other countries waters destroys vast swaths of coral reef and emits more toxic mercury into the atmosphere than any country anywhere in the world. China's carbon emissions are nearly twice what the US has and it's rising fast. If the United Nations is to be an effective organization, it must focus on the real problems of the world. This includes terrorism, the oppression of women, forced labor, drug trafficking, human and sex trafficking, religious persecution and the ethnic cleansing of religious minorities. Tech TV US Canada brings you news and views from White House and State Department. China's President Xi Jinping adapted a defensive tone in his video message. He called for enhanced cooperation over the pandemic and stressing that China had no intentions of fighting either a cold war or a hot one with any other country. Mr. President, the history of development of human society is a history of our struggles against all challenges and difficulties and our victories over them. At present, the world is battling the COVID-19 pandemic as it goes through profound changes never seen in a century. Yet, peace and development remain the underlying trend of the times, and people everywhere crave even more strongly for peace, development, and win-win cooperation. COVID-19 will not be the last crisis to 
uh, confront humanity. So we must join hands and be prepared to meet even more global challenges. First, COVID-19 reminds us that we're living in an interconnected global village with a common stake. All countries are closely connected and we share a common future. No country can gain from others' difficulties or maintain stability by taking advantage of others' troubles. Xi said attempts to politicize the pandemic should be rejected. China is the largest developing country in the world, a country that is committed to peaceful, open, cooperative and common development, he added. Russian President Vladimir Putin called for an international treaty to prohibit weapons in space and offered Russia's coronavirus vaccine to UN employees for free. For the voluntary vaccination of the staff of the UN and its offices, Putin said. He also said the global economic downturn caused by the pandemic renews the need for removing trade sanctions. I am convinced that this anniversary makes it incumbent upon all of us to recall the timeless principles of interstate communication enshrined in the UN Charter and formulated by the Founding Fathers of our Universal Organization in the clearest and most unambiguous terms. These principles include the equality of sovereign states, non-interference in their domestic affairs, the rights of peoples to determine their own future, non-use of force or the threat of force and political settlement of disputes. Looking back at the past decades, one can say that despite all difficulties of the Cold War period, major geopolitical shifts and all the intricacies of today's global politics, the UN has been ably fulfilling its mission of protecting peace, promoting sustainable development of the peoples and continents, and providing assistance in mitigating local crises. This enormous potential and expertise of the UN is relevant and serves as a solid basis for moving ahead. After all, just like any other international organisation or regional entity, the UN should not grow stiff but evolve in accordance with the dynamics of the 21st century and consistently adapt to the realia of the modern world that is indeed becoming more complicated, multipolar and multidimensional. Iranian President Hassan Rouhani said, we are not a bargaining chip in US elections and domestic policies. Rouhani said, any US administration after the upcoming elections will have no choice but to surrender to the resilience of the Iranian nation. For decades, the valiant Iranian nation has paid a similar high price for its quest for freedom and liberation from domination and despotism. However, the Iranian nation has not only resisted the pressure, but flourished and advanced while persistently pursuing its historical and civilizational role as the axis of peace and stability the harbinger of dialogue and tolerance, and the champion of the fight against occupation and extremism. We stood with the people of Afghanistan against Soviet occupiers, domestic warlords, extremists, Al-Qaeda terrorists and American occupiers. Turkey President Tayyip Erdogan again created a controversy over Kashmir and called the Kashmir conflict a burning issue in his virtual address during the UN General Assembly debate and said steps taken following the abolition of the special status of Jammu Kashmir further complicated the problem. He added we are in favor of solving this issue through dialogue within the framework of the United Nations resolutions and especially in line with the expectations of the people of Kashmir. The Kashmir conflict, which is also key to the stability and peace of South Asia, is still a burning issue. Steps taken following the abolition of the special status of Jammu Kashmir further complicated the problem. 
We are in favor of solving this issue through dialogue. Within the framework of the United Nations resolutions, and especially in line with the expectations of the people of Kashmir. Distinguished delegate. India strongly condemned Turkey and stressed to learn to respect the sovereignty of other nations. We have seen remarks by the President of Turkey on Indian Union territory of Jammu and Kashmir. India's permanent representative to the UN said in a tweet. They constitute gross interference in India's internal affairs and are completely unacceptable. Turkey should learn to respect sovereignty of other nations and reflect on its own policies more deeply. On the other hand, Pakistan appreciated Turkey's support over Kashmir issue. Prime Minister Imran Khan wrote on Twitter, Deeply appreciate President Erdogan once again raising his voice in support of the rights of the Kashmiri people during his address to UN General Assembly. Turkey's unwavering support remains a source of strength for the Kashmiris in their legitimate struggle for self-determination. Those were the salient highlights of UN Journal Assembly. Thank you for watching Behind the News with Halima Sadia today.